What's going on, nation? Hey, the 12 second hook. We got a guest today, Matt Kundal, joining us in the lab. We're talking podcasts, we're talking YouTube, and hey, what about live? Hey, I got a dilemma. We're going to talk about the dilemma coming up today, live in the lab with Keith Billis. Hi, I'm Keith Billis, and this is Live in the Lab. All right. A little bit of weirdness in front of the camera there for anybody who's watching. So I'm like, hey, where's the button? Where's the button? I can't get it going. How did you go viral on TikTok? You were on America's Got Talent. How much did you get paid to be on AGT? Oh, you didn't get paid. Keith and Steve here in live in the lab. You're a great interviewer. I love it. 48 miles, 48 hours. And not just once. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> I hit 50 last time and I'm like, yeah, things are a little different than they were 10 years ago. So trust me, things are to keep. You have no time for the BS that much yeah. of society seems to put on the table. Why is that? Like what you're talking about is real right now. Right? There's just no bullshit here, but it's just real. We brought you in with some Marley. I said, Joseph, let's talk music for a second. You said, well, Keith Oldies, 60s, 70s, and 80s. I've never talked to a sir before. Why are you a sir? In many ways, we're the same story. I came from nothing. <laughs> You came from nothing. I think the old saying goes that if you want a trophy, you climb Everest. If you want respect, you climb K2. I've built an AI myself, and it's pretty fascinating when you can have a conversation with yourself with your own knowledge. Have you done that before? Why are we rushing to make these tools if they're all they're going to do is hurt humanity? Does the world need an Oppenheimer moment with AI? What a fun show. Hi, I'm Keith Billis. Ah, what's going on, nation? Happy Valentine's Day. Hey, I'm wearing red, but I got orange socks on. I couldn't find the black pair. So the orange one. So I got the red up top. I got the red on the hat. And I got the orange on the socks. So, you know, sometimes you got to mix it up. You got to go red and orange. What's going on today, nation? Matt Kundal joining us here today, live in the lab. Excited about the conversation. You know how I get to nerd out about business of podcasts and the business about new media and the business of YouTube and all of that stuff. Well, hey, we got an expert today. Apparently he's an expert. That's what he tells me. Like, not, not, listen, that's not what he tells me. I haven't had a conversation with him yet, but I did a little bit of research. Yeah, the guy's a former radio guy too. I grew up in that era. You know, that, that era with a bunch of wires everywhere and transistor radios. I used to fall asleep to Kenny Nicholson listening to my old transistor AM radio, listening to Winnipeg Jets live hockey. Speaking of live, I'm going to talk today to Matt about live. You know how I like to do live content, live streams. And I'm curious to know, well, I know why more people don't do live because they're all lazy. Matt's like, what? Yeah, podcasts are lazy, man. You guys just sit back, record, you edit, you massage it, you make it perfect. When you go live, you got to be accountable to what you say. You got to be accountable to what you're going to do. You got to be accountable to the camera angles you're going to use along the way all the time. You got to you gotta, you gotta flip live. So we're going to talk live with Matt. I'm going to talk a few things. I, I want to talk to you guys. We're going to throw up the clip I did earlier this week since it's Valentine's Day. You know how we like to lead with love here in the lab? You know, you know, we stand on the principles of the Business Athlete Manifesto. So before we get too far, why don't we jump into the manifesto, a four-minute piece, five-minute piece on leading with love. I think today is the day where we want to talk about leading with love, not the mushy stuff, being honestly as a leader, how we lead with love. Let's check it out. Hey, what's going on, nation? You got Keith Bill sitting here, live in the lab at noon central time, 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 Pacific, jumping in here on a Sunday, live in the lab edition. Short one today. This is an addition to give you a reminder. So take a page out of the Business Athlete Manifesto to remind you today, Super Bowl Sunday. When you're debating with your friends, when you're betting with your friends, when you're fighting with your friends. Heck, when you're convincing your friends that Taylor Swift's not going to show up today. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a page from the manifesto and I want you to lead with love. Big time power leading with love. So that's the message I want to leave Business Athlete Nation with today. A little short message. Show up on your podcast machine, show up on your LinkedIn, your X, your YouTube feeds popping up on your phone, notifications all coming in going, hey, Live and Live is on, Keith's talking. No guests today, just reminding you to lead with love. I sat down with a friend on Friday. It's talking to him. we had a conversation about this top and i reminded him when you're afraid walk towards it when you're afraid of being vulnerable embrace it the best thing we can do with a leader is walk towards what we don't want to do and then once we get there embrace the situation with love it's remarkable what happens when we embrace a situation with love now i'm not talking about mushy mushy love i'm talking about emotional connection the rawness of a human being looking into another human being's eyes, knowing they have emotion like you have emotion, knowing they have fears like you have fears. That's what leading with love is. It's understanding 
them as a human being. It's understanding what buttons not to push, what buttons to embrace. So today, this Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, one little thing for you guys today. People always say, Keith, why do you show up every single day? I'll tell you why. Because it keeps me accountable. It keeps me accountable to what's going on up here. And it keeps me accountable to what's going on here. And when I bring this and bring this and bring this together and out late in front of all you, we get results. A lot of people talk. A lot of people, oh yeah, fuck, I show up all the time. Oh yeah, let me see. So we do this show live in the lab, bring in guests, bring in ideas, bring in awareness to help you get through stuff. So today's tip, Super Bowl Sunday, lead with love. Just take a pause. Recognize the person you're leading is just like you. They have fears. They have happiness. They have emotions. They are a human being. So if you don't like them, that's okay. You dislike them, who cares? Show them you as a human being with your love and see what happens. And if you know what I love, there's your message today. I love my peanut butter. So we wind our you know little segment on leading with love today. Leave that message today in Valentine's Day. Lead with love. Look at your team. Look at your look at your family. Look at the people next to you. Lead them. Lead them with love. Lead them as a human being. And here's where I leave myself to before we bring Matt Cundell into the lab to talk with some awesome conversations. Maybe, maybe Matt loves peanut butter too. But hey, we talked in November about no month. We've been doing the show that long. Yeah, Matt. We've been doing the show since August. Every single day, just showing up, doing our thing. November was no month where we said no to something. And I said no to peanut butter. Taped up the old jar. And uh, I haven't cracked it. I just have, I've stayed out of the jar. It's been fantastic for me. It's been fantastic for my waistline. It's been fantastic for my whole mentality. But today for Valentine's Day, I received a pound. A pound. Two half pounds of Reese's peanut butter cups. So my dilemma, business athlete nation, my dilemma is, am I cracking the cups? <laughs> what do you think? Fuck yeah, I'm cracking the cups. I'm not cracking the peanut butter jar, but I cracked the peanut butter cups. A big pound, Reese's peanut butter cups. Third, my Valentine's gift. Would you get your loved one today? All right, let's bring uh, Matt Kendall into the lab. He's in the green room. We know how this all works. We're going to bring him up here on the screen and invite him in. He's a podcast guy. I think he's new to this video thing. So um, we'll see how it goes. Matt. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Doing great. Thanks Excellent. For jo- Thanks for joining me here today. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah. So a radio guy, radio voice, radio setup. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been on a radio nearly um, 10 years, although, I, I, you know, I did some radio consulting after that. Yeah. But yeah, then sort of fell into podcasting. I want to podcast. Oh, I'm excited about today's chat as you heard my little monologue there. And I know that uh, I do my research. I listened to your recent interview with uh, with Jay. I think it was Jay. You got you guys talked about 30 minutes about the industry and uh, about the changes happening in the industry. Bell Media's recent cuts here in the last week affecting local radio and so much to talk about. But Matt, I need my audience to get to know who you are, get to know why they should care about continuing to listen to this conversation. I always do a horrible job interviewing, or, you know, introducing my guests so my guests can introduce themselves. Yeah, actually, and that, that's funny enough. That's actually a tip I, I tell people not to do. Um, there you go. Don't, do not let your guest introduce yourself because th- this is where a lot of people will just talk about themselves. Yeah. And, and most people are very boring. <laughs> um, so w- when people say, you know, like, who are you? I just give the eight second pitch about who I am. I'm a podcast wizard. And uh, I deal with audio and work with podcasts all day. And that doesn't sound very exciting. So then people are going to be like, well, I'm not going to listen to this. This doesn't sound very exciting. Um, You know, a lot of people at the beginning of a show will read a LinkedIn bio. LinkedIn bio is not even very exciting for most people. It's nice to peruse, but that's not very exciting. So usually what I tell people is like, you need to tell your audience in 45 seconds why they need to listen to the next one hour of this show or however long the show is going to go. And I'm going to tell you here today, I'm going to cut through the clutter of all things audio and podcast. We're going to get rid of the BS. We're going to tell you what matters, what doesn't matter, how to be compelling, how not to be boring. And we're, we're just going to tell you how to make great content, we'll give you tips and tricks and then how to market it. That's what I'm good at. So if you want to do well, listen to me. I love it. Perfect. So I'm done. There we go. Keith's out of here. Matt's going to take the show over and he's going to tell you all about what he got to do to be successful in the podcast industry. Uh, because I'm not the expert as I keep telling nation. I've been doing this. So I'm on my, I think my just under 600th show, I believe it is. Uh, 583 videos we've uploaded to YouTube, I think it is. So now we're starting to pay attention to, um, so let, let, let me reframe that. 
583 different videos. I've done about uh, 3690, probably about 150, 180 live shows. We've been going live since uh, end of August. Um, so I'm, I'm eager to talk about that. I'm eager to talk about your experience in the industry. So let's just jump right into podcasting, Matt, and what's changing in the industry about it. Well, everything. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, you know, I, I got into this and I'm, I'm very excited to, uh, you know, when you do radio, radio has been doing the same thing for m many, many years. They don't have to, but the industry chooses to do so for whatever bizarre reason. They're still playing, you know, 10 in a row with no commercials, being marketed the same way, playing the same songs we grew up on. Most of them are playing music. Talk is expensive, so they don't want to invest in, th in that area. But podcasting, you wake up to the future every day. I think the nice thing about podcasting that hasn't changed is, is how it's distributed. And right now we're talking on YouTube. Yeah. I'm not even certain this goes out as an RSS feed in a podcast. And can I get this on Apple Podcasts? I'm not even sure about that. It does. But, okay, great. And that's, that's fine. But what we're doing right now, this, con this live conversation is not a podcast. This is a live show. And yeah. the live show will become a podcast. But I think a lot of people say, well, you know, I, I go to YouTube for my podcasts. Well, they might be coming here for the live show, but they might finish listening to this in the car on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever uh, you know, else you're going to put it. And I think that's the big change since, you know, the day you started your show back in August was kind of around the same time that I don't want to say it was a come to Jesus moment, but it was we, we had some data as podcasters to understand really what YouTube can offer podcasters. And, you know, where it's going, listen, Joe Rogan's been, you know, on, I mean, people have been doing podcasts for years and, you know, video goes along with it, but YouTube is really the great equalizer when it comes to this. Mm -hmm. And YouTube is such a powerful marketing tool. It's the world's second biggest search engine. And so, you know, here we go. There's a great way for podcast discovery is through YouTube. When I sat down for today's show, I said to myself, I really wanted today's show to be as if I was sitting in front of an expert at a business meeting because I want to learn. I am new to this. Uh, I know you're an expert in this, and I really just wanted to open my ears and learn and learn and learn. And I want to share with you openly. I'm a big believer in building in the open. I'm a big believer in sharing with my audience what I'm up to. So I want to treat this time together with you, you know, as if you're talking about the show, critiquing, asking questions and having a back and forth. So I want to tell you how I and why I arrived at doing live. So when I was sitting down back in July, August to, to talk about, you know, starting a podcast, I said to myself, I don't want to do a podcast, Matt, because everybody, I'm going to put some air quotes out there for the listeners. Everybody does a podcast and there's a perception of podcasts. It's, you know, you do it once a week, once a month, you do it in the closet, somebody starts, they end. It's like, it's just not, it's not professional and I'm not suggesting it's not. I'm just, I'm, I'm using air quotes on everything here. You do a pro show, you got pro quality, you got pro guests, you, you, you put up pro stuff. However, we still call it a podcast. And I said to myself, no, Matt, I want to do a show. I want to take a page of what I know of from the past. And I want to do a few things from the past because I want to look at history to predict the future. I said to myself, I'm going to call it a show, not a podcast. So right away, I'm separating myself from not a podcast, I'm a show. I even created some logos, Matt. Just like when Salesforce came out, they had their no software and it was like a big, big strike on software. I created a podcast logo, which was a strike against the podcast and saying, no, we're doing a show. And then I said to my colleague at the time, I want to go live. He's like, what? I go, yeah, let's go live. He's like, why would you go live? Because he was a podcast guy. I said, well, I'm recording it anyways. So why wouldn't I just do it live and record it at the same time? And I said, I'll tell you what, let's do it at noon central time, Monday to Friday. He's looking at me like every single day at noon. I'm like, yeah. He's like, why? I go, well, I'm alive. I'm around anyways. And what a wonderful way for me to hold myself accountable to that time spot. And what a wonderful way to be for me to build my brand in the public eye as a guy who always shows up as a guy you can trust. Because I grew up, Matt, knowing that every night at 10 o'clock, there's Peter Mansbridge. Every day at six o'clock, there was the news every day. It's, and I know that world doesn't exist anymore. But human beings are programmed on routine. And I believe, and I'm already seeing it with my own content, Billis just shows up every single fucking day at noon. He is always popping in with guests, dropping content, and it's starting to resonate with people. Hence, I did my live in the lab show, noon central time. And you know what? I don't even care sometimes if nobody's watching at noon. I really don't. It's not the point of it because you and I had to record this anyways. 
So then what I also did was I said, okay, I'm going to play on the marketing side of things like I did with the show at the beginning. They're saying, all you podcast guys, you record, it's all massaged and edited. And now in a world of AI can be all fake. So I'm playing on the, I do it live. We, we make mistakes on the air, et cetera, et cetera. What is your take on my point of view on how I've rolled this out? Open to all criticism, feedback, whatever you want to say, but that just, just tell, been telling you about my business idea with this whole thing. Yeah, that's it. It's, yeah. You're exactly right. There's, you know, why do you think radio is so successful? Because they show up there every day at the same time and they're always there. There's a reliability to it. And I think it's one of the big mistakes that podcasters make is they don't release their content on a consistent basis, whereby it is there. And the minute you are there and you are present and you are delivering something, you do yes. become part of people's media consumption. The Love Boat, Saturday nights at eight, followed by yes. Fantasy Island. Right, right. Yes. yes. Friday yes. nights. Yes. What was on Friday nights on CBS? Mag Magnum PI. Magnum PI, I think, was Wednesday. My but, advice. But, but Dukes of Hazard followed yes. by Dallas. That's right. Right. But that's how audiences are built, right? So you, yes. you're, you're doing the exact right thing, you know, coming in and being live and being present. You know, you've heard the expression, you get, you know, half the marks is just showing up. Yeah. And that's what's happening. I would only push back on one thing. Tell me. Um, and that's, you know, you put this into podcast form afterwards. Yes, I do. Yeah. And th that's great because now you're giving an opportunity for people to catch up. Radio stations do that all the time. Catch up radio is I think what they call it in Britain. So it's an opportunity for people to catch up. So you are live and you are also on demand. You're serving both audiences yes. properly. The only thing that sort of sticks in my mind when it comes to podcasting is anything you can record, you can make better. And there are tools out there that would be able to take out, you know, the ums and the ahs. Yes. Some of the things like I, I look at a program like Descript. If you were to take this show and run it through there, you could probably shave about two or three minutes off it yes. and then save that time for your listeners, you know, when you put it up in podcasts. But, you know, by and large, no, I think you're doing I think that you're doing it right. And there's nothing wrong with live. I love it. I'm here live. It's great. So we use Descript, putting a plug out for the for the platform. I'm a big fan of the platform. Uh, yeah. We uh, it's part of our workflow. When we do post our shows after, we run it through Descript, and you make the changes, make the edits, uh, and then pull clips out. Uh, we run also through a platform called uh, Munch to create nine by sixteen, the sixteen by nine shorts. So we're all about uh, we're all about that. But it's funny, Matt. I'm, you know there come shorts. I've, I've heard you talk about shorts on a couple of podcasts or a couple of shows recently. And I, I got to be honest with you, my friend, I, I've had a big debate over it. I, I know the reason and purpose for it, but I'm a long form conversation show. Mm -hmm. yep. And I got distracted with trying to make too many shorts on too, too many uh, on per show. And my cost to create content per show was going up. That's the changes with podcasting that I'm going through these days mm. is wrestling with that. I just want to mention about Descript. I, I don't like Descript. I don't use Descript and it's nothing against Descript. It's a wonderful product. And I think a lot of people who just aren't used to audio or how to, mm -hmm. how to edit or, you know, would prefer to use a tool like this, very useful mm -hmm. for what you're doing, as you pointed out, but I, I like to edit audio uh, visually and with my, and with my ears. Mm -hmm. And that's just a me thing mm -hmm. um, more than anything. I use, I've used Descript from the very beginning. I work with the company. They bought Squadcast. Squadcast yes. is something that's very close to, to what I do. I send all my video now to Descript. Somebody else takes care of it. So I love Descript. I don't use it. Now, shorts. Uh, okay, so where to begin with shorts? We we do know that that shorts are a great way to connect to people. We, you and I have seen people just sitting there scrolling through reels, scrolling mm -hmm. through TikToks and mm -hmm. catching these things. It's just, a, it's another way of discovery. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I worry about with people, especially, I don't know if a program like Munch will do this. I'm not sure if a program, you know, what programs are out there doing this that, you know, these people are like, Hey, we're going to take your content and we're going to make four reels for you. We're mm -hmm. going to make four vertical pieces. And then you're stuck with these four vertical pieces, but I've got some severe bad news for just about everybody, including you, including me. And that's your content's not good enough for four reels. You're not that good. Mm -hmm. Um, there's just not enough golden nuggets in there of content to be pushing out there. My recommendation is to go and find one yeah, and then hammer that home everywhere. Just find it's kind it's kind of like, you know, a, a book of porn. Somebody has gone through and highlighted the sex scene for their husband or wife. This is what you're doing with this show. We want you to go and find the sex scene and we want that, that highlighted and we want to put that out as a short. And I, I think back to when I was, you know, program director, 
for radio stations with the morning show. Okay, well, what's the highlight going to be today? Mm-hmm. And only three of the five shows are any good. And that's even the top rated shows as well. And there's only one clip that's really worth 60 seconds or 30 seconds of entertaining the audience in order to do it. So you as a podcaster, and I don't mean you, I just mean anybody who's watching mm-hmm. this, what makes you think you're so good that you can go and get four reels fr- from your circle jerk episode that you just did to put out there? It's not. We have an awful lot of litter on the internet. You're just littering the internet with stupid shorts about nothing. A lot of it's verbal diarrhea. It's boring. It's not good. And remember something. Every time you put out a bad short or a bad clip, you're just telling your audience you are bad. Be very, very careful about what you put out. You better make sure that thing is rock solid and awesome. And if you do a show, you don't have to do a clip. You can do something else. You can find another thing. You can you can just turn it on yourself and talk about why the episode was great. But you don't have to do a short with your guest. Yeah, there's a lot of really bad shorts going out there. And all you are doing is you are reinforcing to your audience that, that you're boring. Th- that is spectacular advice. Oh. I, I'm, I'm hating I'm hating the shorts with all the big heads popping up in my feeds, all the bad video quality and and I really can't add any more to what you just said because I'm, I, listen, I might be doing a bad job of it. I, I really zero in on the one clip. Just find yeah. me the one. Yes. And let's put it out there and, and hopefully it resonates enough with people to understand what I'm doing on my show, yes. the point I'm trying to get across. And what I want you to take away and hopefully maybe go and listen to the whole 30 or 60 minutes or whatever I've done that that's all it's good for. But anyway, you people making four or five, you are, you are, you are killing yourself. You're killing your show. You're killing yourself. Yeah. I I've been focusing on like the 60, not even a 60 second trailer I'll put out for, you know, I'll grab a week's worth of clips or something, but, uh, trying to cut back as much as possible. And again, I'm a short form guy and I'm sorry, I'm a long form guy. And I had come to that realization. I will tell you, and you'll probably, enjoy this maybe you are aware of of course you're aware of this you're in the industry but as a nerd i like to spend time reading on the tech side of things and speculation so iphone 16 matt new button coming out on it, hardware going to be right here on it uh, because uh, apple wants to encourage people to shoot video this way uh, a number of reasons why the camera placement on the iphone uh, capture spatial video for the headset. So they need to create ecosystem of content for the headset because we know the Apple Vision Pro is the future of, of computing. So uh, in order to create content for that headset, uh, we got to shoot content this way. Oh, by the way, if you have an Apple 15, uh, Apple Vision uh, 15, I encourage you to turn your spatial video on because now you can capture content for it. So when you do get your headset, you're enjoying the content you shot you know, years ago. It's tips I give my audience all the time. But here's the thing. We know advertisers don't make a lot of money on vertical videos. And we know that the only way you were going to dethrone YouTube at the time was to create something different. So TikTok comes in and says, hey, we're going to create vertical videos. And we know that we, there's, a, there's a bunch of people that grew up with the remote control and there's a whole mechanism there of flick, 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 flick. So they discovered the old vertical video that worked for a while. But we also know TikTok is encouraging people to shoot ver- horizontal videos. So I'm telling you, over the next 10 years, we're seeing a move back to the past. We're going to go back to horizontal long form videos on YouTube, on TikTok. And what you and I are doing right now is going to be appreciated again. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of it is short attention span theater. So can we create short videos in in this, you know, horizontal form? I look forward to it. I'd like to think it's going to change though, Matt. Debate me on this. Do do you not think that people are going to want to, you know, be reunited with long form discussions again? Oh, I think there's more long form discussion than ever now. Yes. Uh, I think they... you know, they found it on radio in the past and then yes, finding it on YouTube, it's out there. Yes. Podcast podcasts do incredibly well. Um, yeah, it's all out there and it's being consumed. I mean, Joe Rogan's doing a four hour, you know, threes and twos and threes and four hours. He's doing fine. Yes. Uh, hardcore history. Dan Carlin, that's a six hour show. That's fine. Long discussions are being consumed all over the place. It's it's happening. We just don't, well, we just don't have shared experiences with it. And I think right. by not having shared experiences, like what you watch and listen to as long form is may not be what I watch and listen to. Right, right. Yeah. And, and I heard your discussion with, uh, was it was Stephen actually, Stephen Goldstein. It was that discussion you just had recently. Yeah. You guys talked about the transition to YouTube and, and the migration of podcasts into YouTube and the term of podcasting, what it all means and so forth. I think we're seeing the future of of old school talk TV shows. 
And and it's just this idea of let's not define it whether it's a podcast or whether it's a TV show. We're just consuming content in video format, and we're watching the new TV right now, frankly. Yeah, and it might also be in social, right? So this could be on Facebook. Yeah. This could be on Twitter. This could be – I don't even know where you're kicking this out to on StreamYard. Well, I'm, I'm on X, LinkedIn, and YouTube all at once right now. And, I'll, yeah. and, here, and here's what fascinates me too. Uh, so we're both in Winnipeg. It's funny because we both talked how we don't do any business in Winnipeg. We're both in Winnipeg. Yeah. Um, my entire business when I started was outside of Winnipeg. There's no broadcaster broadcasting in Winnipeg right now what you and I are doing live. So whether that means anything to anybody, but the reach that I have into the network of business people in LinkedIn right now fascinates me that there's not a broadcaster in Winnipeg that's I discovered what I've discovered here in the last four months. Yeah, I mean, you're kicking out to the world and a broadcast can only kick out to Winnipeg. So your playground is going to be bigger than theirs. So, I mean, is the what is the role of broadcast? Broadcast is local. Um, they need yes. to har- they need to harness local and and really dive into it. And live and local would really work as well for you know that matter. But you know, your playground is bigger. You get you've got the whole you know the whole world is your village when you're on the internet. So let's go live local. I, I have been now, now. I'll be revealing my thoughts to the audience. I have been playing with this in my mind because I'm doing this every single day at noon Central Time, anyways. Why would I not flip the switch at call it 6 a.m. and start creating live discussion in the morning, local content with local people here in Winnipeg, broadcasting it on YouTube and starting something we both know, Matt Kundal, is inevitable anyways. So now you're competing against the device. I've got a device in my hand. Do I want, how do I want to spend that time? Maybe I want to listen to a podcast. Maybe I want to listen on my smart speaker. Maybe mm-hmm. I want to listen. But when you're in broadcast... It's radio. Radio, two seconds. You can access it very, very easily. Mm-hmm. It's also free. Mm-hmm. Um, the internet is not actually free. Someone's got to pay cell data for that. Mm-hmm. Someone's got to pay a, mm-hmm. a, a, an internet bill in order to connect to it. Uh, radio's free. Television is largely free. You can still capture it over the air. So you're playing to my argument then because fast channels are the fastest growing stream of 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 uh of advertising on on television sets you buy a tv set you got all these fast channels installed and they're all ad supported so nothing yeah but no listen a lot of people just don't have that so any tv you buy though any tv you buy you turn on you have free over the air channels on it plus youtube yeah you you can definitely access it but it's how are people spending their time with their eyes you want to go up against the chiefs and taylor swift Right. It's just, there's, there's a whole system, like your whole phone mm-hmm. is an, is an ecosystem mm-hmm. and, and YouTube is just one little part of it. And by the way, I don't know if you know this, we may see people on the train on the Metro. Cause I've seen it, you know, flipping through TikToks like this. Mm-hmm. I don't see nobody like this on the train. Nobody's doing this. You're going to get car sick. There's nobody on the airplane doing this. So there's people on the airplanes, old Matt with headsets on now. Yeah. And they're listening to podcasts, audio. No, video headsets. Mm, yeah, well. No, I'm telling you, go look. The Vision, the Vision Pro, you go look at the Vision Pro on subways in New York City. Vision okay, Pro okay, on... okay, calm down. We have to stop, okay? Subways in Toronto, okay. airplane. We have to, we, you, the, the percentage of people doing that is incredibly low. Let me also introduce you to the country of Canada where nobody has unlimited cell data, okay? So people are not going to want to go and download your video podcast Okay. They might be able to stream it. It costs money. Okay. There are companies out there, robbers. Oh, I meant to say Rogers, right? <laughs> they are going to charge you up the wazoo. Damn, I'm wearing that sort of thing. Not. Damn it. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just calling it like it is. Yeah. And I see the download numbers and people are like, well, how come there's like, why does it, this was an interesting stat about my podcast. And this was yes. pointed out by a company that I work with in Spain. How come in the States they download your podcast right away, but in Canada, they download it the next morning. And I said, because people have their phone set up in Canada so that their Wi-Fi at home will, will download the show. In yeah. the States, it doesn't matter. So the minute I release the show, it'll come down on Verizon. It comes down on AT&T. It doesn't matter because they've got unlimited plans. So when I hear you say, well, people are doing this with video and they're watching that with it, hardly anybody is doing that, okay? People are very, very married to easy and simple and video is incredibly de- it doesn't transport very well mm-hmm. okay it do- and and you moving by the way on a train it doesn't make for a great experience so maybe you- we're not watching but we're listening to it though right so we're listening to it so we're, we're perhaps just checking in on keith and matt i want to see what matt looks like and then i put it in my pocket and i listen away yeah and that is happening yes so and and that's that's the study that steve did that said okay i'm gonna 
you know, I'm watching Keith and Matt right now. Um, don't have time for it. Uh, lunch is finishing. I'll catch up later tonight to fin- figure out where the end of the conversation went. Then yeah. they're going to go to Spotify or Apple and pick up on the conversation there. Yes. So is your point of view that local and live streaming doesn't work in 2024? Or do you think like, so does live local news work streaming, Matt? Absolutely. It totally does. I think to your point though, if you wanted to do some content though, mm-hmm. you're going to be on the internet. Niche content is not going to work in a, in a broadcast form. Uh, you're not going to be able to go down to CJOB and start talking niche audiences at six and seven in the morning. You're going to have to do news, weather, sports still. Yeah. Let me ask you this question. Is there a day where a YouTube local station in Winnipeg competes or overtakes the big dog CJOB? Maybe buy them out. But if I were YouTube and YouTube, Google, Facebook, why would I want to buy a radio station? Right. So if you started a live stream, though, the Matt, the Matt Kundal live stream, which is the Matt Kundal news local. So, so it basically replicates local radio, but it starts without all the infrastructure of radio and it's purely broadcast on YouTube. Does it work? Yeah, of course it does. But I'm my, my point is about radio is that it costs a lot of money to turn the lights on at those places. Yes. yes. Yeah. Hydro, hydro is expensive. I mean, there was a station here, 1290, that went under. It's yes, the, so, the, the old sports station. But like, would you pay it? Would you pay a dollar for it? No, but that, but you're supporting my point, which I which I think is the which to me is the future, Matt. Which is we saw we saw what Hustler we saw what Andrew and, and Remus did over at Winnipeg Sports Talk, and we saw it happen in we saw it happen in Regina and Edmonton and Saskatoon. And I believe one day somebody wakes up and says, "Hey, I want to buy all these podcasts again," and we wake up with Is the Aspers Can West Global again, except just the next iteration of the network. You follow me? Yeah. uh, Okay. So, and a little bit complicated in podcasts because podcasts are distributed with an RSS feed. Mm -hmm. So they are very, very difficult to try to herd. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've heard about companies starting up that want to become the Netflix of podcasting. Mm -hmm. Uh And many companies tried and, and I watched them. I was warned by some of the, the, the real OGs in the podcast space that it's not going to happen. And it didn't. I guess the only company I think that really has a shot of becoming the Netflix of podcasting and it's happening now is YouTube. And they're just becoming the YouTube of podcasting and that's fine. Um, yes. And the added value is the is the video and mark, marketing reach of it. But there is going to be no Netflix of podcasting. I laughed so many times when, and, and Spotify to that, to that end also tried with Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. We're going to bring in Joe Rogan. We're going to bring in Caller Daddy. We're going to bring mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. the Kardashians. We're going to bring in Meghan Markle mm-hmm. and not really release any episodes of value. We're going to do all this stuff. And people, some people followed, maybe their subscription rate went up a little bit, but overall it, you know, it's not beneficial to the people doing the content because what happened was they were only on Spotify. So you're pretty much throwing out 80% of your audience to go exclusive. Being exclusive. And like you said, oh, let's build up a little tower like uh, Izzy Asper and can west let's build up these little fiefdoms and it doesn't work that way on the internet very well and especially you know trying to sheep herd podcasts into it's like herding cats it doesn't work yeah but matt we're seeing it all the time though aren't we though with networks right we're here like the you know the, the caller daddy podcast is part of a larger network of podcasts right so i'm referring to that more so like i'm, I'm referring to that business model yeah and they uh, just abandon it so caller daddy is now mm-hmm. available everywhere again no, no, I'm not talking about the exclusive part with Spotify. Yeah, I'm okay. talking about the ownership side of it, right? So we know that Caller Daddy is part of a large media entity that has a ton of other pod, uh, other shows that are part of it. Are we sure? Yes. I think there's a distribution deal. I'm not sure who owns. I think Spotify does on that, right? No, so Spotify owns the distribution of it, but I'm talking about the ownership of the of the of the actual content, right? Yeah, so- and 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 it's yes. And by the way, a lot of companies have struggled with this, and Spotify is a great example of that because uh, they had um, a podcast called Heavyweight, which is mm-hmm. just you know came out of Gimlet. Like they bought up Gimlet. Let's take all these podcasts and see what we can do with them. And you know, making audio is very very expensive. Mm-hmm. And I know you kind of like at the beginning sort of talked a little bit about you know do we need to really pay this much attention to creating good audio? And the answer is yes. Yes, you 100% do. hundred percent you do. I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. But it also takes a lot of people to make great audio. Yes. And that gets expensive. So here you are with a show, you're going to be able to charge, let's say, uh, you know, a, a $30 CPM to get some ads into your show, $30 for every thousand people that listen to it. But heavyweight can only charge the same thing. And then now you got to take 30 bucks and you got to split it across the 10 people who help make the show. Now it's expensive. Yeah. And and th- that's not a lot for the bottom line. So 
what I really, really love about this space is how someone like yourself, someone like me can create a little something and monetize mm. it. Yeah. And the bigger stuff, it's, it's super, super hard. It's like one of these things where you open up too many restaurants and then like, there's this one restaurant that just sort of sucks the life out of the other five restaurants in your, in your group. And there's like this one property that just, and by the way, the properties that really, and I've got a network, the sound off um, network, mm -hmm. we have podcasts that come in, but the, the ones that are the hardest to really grill down on are the ones with a lot of downloads that take a lot of people to, mm. to make. Mm -hmm. So it, it very, you gotta be very careful, uh, you know, about your monetization strategy and how you're going to do it, do it. And I just tell people all the time, I said, you know, maybe, maybe what you and I are doing right now, this is not really about making money. It's really about marketing and marketing yourself. It's true, isn't it? Like that's really mm -hmm. what, so when I, I appreciate your comment on that, uh, as I, as I reembarked on my journey back into the world of work. Uh, I, I started a social media company years back, sold it, did okay for myself, spent some time, retired. This was a wonderful way for me to rebuild my network because people like to talk about themselves, as you know, right? So <laughs> what a wonderful way to knock on somebody's door on LinkedIn or across the world and say, hey, you want to come talk about yourself on my show? And it's been a great way to market myself, my personal brand, what we're creating here. And I always say this, Matt, it's the most fun I've ever had not making any money. Yeah, but you are making money because you're marketing yourself. So you, yes. this is the marketing side of your business. And yes, I spent a long time after radio yeah. just wondering, what, what am I going to do? Like, what what's going on? And I said, I don't know. I'll start this podcast. I started the podcast and then people started to listen. I started to meet people. Yes. And then once you start to meet people, stuff begins to happen. And I'm like, I don't really know exactly what <laughs> was going to happen, but stuff did begin, begin to happen. And it started, you know, in any, it started in a yoga class and somebody said, I want a podcast. And I said, yeah. okay, I'll help you get started with that. And yeah. we started with one, then we two. Yeah. Next thing you know, we're at 70. <laughs> and, and now there's 70 podcasts that, that we sort of consult or work with in some capacity. Because it can be, it can be, this is a very complicated space. And I've had people come in, a lot of business people say, well, why don't you set it up so it's like a package and here are your three prices. And I go, because everybody has different needs. Yeah. And a lot of people are going to come and look at those packages and just be like, oh, I'm out of here. Uh, yeah. It doesn't pertain to me. You, you, it really does need to be customized. Some people are really good at graphics. Some people are really good at audio. Some people are really good at editing. Some people are, you know, know how to use Descript really well in order to do stuff. So you have to really sort of work with people to figure out what they need and then to do it. A lot of people can't do websites. A yeah. lot of people it's, so you need to really, so I need to work with customers that and help move their, the needle for themselves. I'm not here to make them money. I'm here to enable them to make money. I'm here to enable them to succeed. Here's the toy box. Here's how you're going to do it. Here's what you need to do. What are you selling in your show? And quite often I have to ask a lot of hard questions before we start. And I just say, mm, yeah, I don't think you should be doing this. Maybe you should be a podcast guest. You should become a professional podcast guest. And that is a thing. And immediately I say, you got to call interview connections. you got to call Jessica Rhodes and she's going to get you on all the top podcasts and you're going to become famous that way. You do not need to start a podcast. So many different ways, many different ways to go about this. AI, 11 labs. You're an audio guy. You are an audio engineer. You, you know, you're, you know, the, the, the voice of spoken words powerful to you. You must be intrigued, taken aback, don't like, dislike. What's your opinion on 11 labs and what they're doing with voice technology? As a voice uh, talent. So, cause I do voice work for, for people. I mean, I think that's a worrisome side to see, cause I did have a client call me and say, oh, you don't need to, we're just going to, we have all your audio. We've turned it, we've, we've, oh, we've, we've turned it into something here and oh. we don't need you to record any more spots. Cause we can just type into the computer and, uh, here's your voice and we're going to run with this. And I said, yeah, I'm calling my lawyer. And, <laughs> yeah. and the best part was that, you know what the best part was? They only yeah. wanted to pay me. $50 instead oh. of $500. And they thought they were doing me a favor. <laughs> Outstanding. I should deliver it in that voice too, eh? Okay, Matt, well, we're only not going to pay you they were so <laughs> They were so excited about ripping me off. They called and told me that they were going to rip me off. And, oh. But they, but you know what? We get these things and, and, and a lot of people, like this person didn't understand yeah. about, you know, that, that there was infringement here of, of, you know, IP. And I'm like, I had to explain to them. I said, I'm going to have to get a lawyer. You can't do this. And they said, ah, <laughs> oh, but it's so easy. It's a great deal. We'll just send you 50 bucks. 
<laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not doing this. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. So, I mean, that stuff is, I mean, and a, again, a program like Descript, yeah. which will let me, yes. you know, um, fix, uh, fix a name. Um, hey, oh, the person's name was Sally, right? And I, I let's say I said Sarah. Yeah. Well, I can go through now Descript and I can change the name and now I'm, I'm, I'm fine and it will reproduce my voice. And I've given it permission to do that. I, I think that's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I would tell anybody and everyone that if you do get a chance to, especially if you're in a performing business, is to copyright your your AI, have it done professionally, and then just retain it and then license it to people. That is the business model to do that. All right. Other than that, be on guard. <laughs> you know, be on guard. And I use Otter. Like I love Otter. Yes, me you know, too. Boom. Yes. You know, it, 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 hey, Otter, tell me about my conversation today with Kevin. How did it go? And yes. yes. Here's the summary. Copy and paste. Uh, the AI issue that I have, um, and again, people are, I know that there's people out there who are going to be smart and use it well, and they're going to get promoted and they're going to get a lot of money and they're going to move up the corporate chain and all that stuff. But for those of you, and I'm looking at you boring podcasters, the boring ones, <laughs> the ones who wanted us four clips of me being boring. Now, now we're going to have our show notes be really boring. You've got to be so careful mm. about asking AI chat GPT, whatever, to write your show notes, mm, you're yes. going, you're going to get average work. And if your goal is to have average work, if your goal is to be exceptional, write your own show notes to the best of your ability. You can have a little assistance, maybe go off the, the, the sheet, but you've got to personalize stuff. And then I think the minute people sense that there's AI involvement or it doesn't sound natural or it reads badly, the listener is out. They are so gone. You'd be so surprised at how smart listeners are. Mm-hmm. We don't give them any credit. Mm-hmm. Um, we used to do book interviews on the radio and the author would come in and sit down, talk today about the book. And, uh, oh yeah, in my latest book, this, 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 well, the numbers on radio, we could see them, they would go down. <laughs> but like what's going on? And listeners knew that they were not going to get anything, any value out of this other than being pitched. Yeah. The book. Um, so broadcasters figured this out a long time ago. And the other one was politicians because they knew they weren't going to be told the truth, no matter who it was. I've, I've seen this too in podcasting. Well, I've got this person coming in and they are the premier or they're the prime minister or whatever. And the numbers are, are worse than their <laughs> actual show with Joe Blow. And they go, well, why is this? I go, because people aren't getting the truth. They're, they know it's a politician they're being lied to or pitched to. You know, it's, that's just the nature of it. David Letterman figured it out. He would have a guest on and at the very end he goes, oh, by the way, that's Warren Zevon. Here's the book. <laughs> yes. Interview's over. Yes. But there's the book and he yes. chose the book. Smart. So, you know, authenticity is it. Like you've got to be authentic in your show. You've got to be real or it, it's not going to work. I'm appreciative of that comment, Matt, because when I, again, using some old school marketing tricks, because I'm old. I purposely named the show Live in the Lab with Keith Billis, taking the David Letterman, Jay Leno thing, because this is my show. Then this is my show. This is not about pitching your book. I've had people on my show that want to pitch their books. I'm like, wait a minute. No, you did this. So we'll talk for 57 minutes about something really curious to me and curious about them, and then maybe mention the book at the end. But I'm not here to sell books and sell services. I, I There's a lot of other shows for that. I'm here to entertain and inform. And that's what the feedback I get from people listening to my show and listening to my content. The feedback I get, Matt, is often, Keith, I love how you fanboy over your guests like Jimmy Fallon. You really get into the pocket of the guests and you get close to them and it gets me engaged with the guests because you like the guests. So, because I'm not there to sell you something because I think, because you're right. People are smart these days. They don't want to be sold something. Yeah. So you're, you're enthusiastic and yeah. enthusiasm is infectious. Right. It, and, and. You know, people are like, well, I've got this interview coming up with this person. What do I do? And I'm like, okay, well, are you curious? You should be genuinely curious. <laughs> what do I do? Yeah. You shouldn't have a podcast in the first place. Well, you know, I tell you, somebody, somebody, somebody was saying, well, can you write some show notes or some prep for me? Oh. I'm, like, I'm like, well, do your own prep. Like you, you should be genuinely curious. And, and by the way, then I actually sent them the prep and then they were like this. Hey, Fred, it says here that I'm like, oh, throw me under the bus after I've written you some prep. Right. And I'm like, yeah, you can't like it. it, You got you've got people read through this stuff so much. And that's the other thing I would really profess to people. And that's uh, goes back to Bill Parcells. Mm -hmm. 
uh, New York Giants, Dallas Cowboys, Patriots, mm. and the Jets. He coached all those teams, but it was two. He had two points to it. Preparate. It was preparation and execution. Fifty percent preparation, fifty percent execution, and it's the same thing for show prep. When you do go on the radio to do a radio show, it's you know it's show prep. And anytime you run into trouble in a live scenario, and I know you're keen on live, and I'm glad we're talking a little bit about being live, mm -hmm. is, uh, well, something came out the wrong way. Somebody said the wrong thing. What happened? 100% of the time that I've had to go back and, and unstick somebody who said something wrong live was because they didn't prepare. <clears throat> it's preparation. They just said the wrong word because they just were not prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of people are like, hey, we're going off the cuff with this stuff. Uh, this is how, you know, loose lips sink ships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is how it happens. It's because you're not prepared. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's interesting when you say that because I, because we all prepare differently. Uh, I, I prepare, but I don't prepare how maybe we'll I'll explain. So I, I don't script my shows. Uh, I, I have bullet points. I know who my guest is. I, I try not to create too much structure because it allows me to be more authentic with my with my guests and allow and and, 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 the, and the flow of the show. Believe it or not, Matt, I use music for my motivation to speak. I have things I want to talk about. I put music on and I put my headset on and the words just flow to me. And that's my delivery mechanism. It's, you know, and, and, and it works for me. Sometimes I fuck up and sometimes I do pretty awesome. But I've learned, Matt, that I've done it enough times that it that's my that's that's my prep for me and it works extremely well and then the tip i always give people when they're asking me questions about my show is is this simple cliche of just be curious and just mm -hmm. ask curious questions that you think your listener would want to be asking so one of the big tips i always have is pen and paper beside me at all times yes yes just in case yes somebody says something i'll scribble it and then i'll come back to it yes you referenced the the uh, steve goldstein podcast that, that's my prep ah oh, there you go right yeah. it just it's yeah. a bunch of scribble Yes. And I will spend close to a half hour scribbling stuff and trying to organize mm. it. And mm. that's it pretty much when it comes to, to prep. I spend the half hour before I do the show thinking and doing that. And then we do the show. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And that, that to me is it. And I think that's how you create authentic content. Right. And when you over prep, it, it can kind of become really stale and, and lame and, and become really quickly boring, frankly, in my yeah. opinion. It really does. It really does. Hey, Matt, before we wrap up, I know I grabbed you for an hour. We're 52 minutes into our discussion, including my monologue. Uh, last tips, comments, advice for me. And honestly, advice for me, I want to learn. I want to keep getting better at this. I have big aspirations for this. I'm not, I'm not stopping. I show up every single day and I want to get better every single day. And I've done enough shows now, Matt, where I'm starting to look into the data to start doing things a little differently along the way. What advice would you offer me? Uh, well, I guess the, I mean, YouTube is, is one way to measure. So the first thing I would do is do not compare the YouTube numbers against the, against the, the RSS podcast numbers. So where's your podcast hosted? Uh, so I, so great question. So I'm hosting my podcast on Substack, uh, okay. and then I'm distributing it from Substack across all the platforms with the RSS feed. Yeah. And so I would look at those numbers. Um, I guess the first thing I would be a little bit ask is are those numbers IAB certified so does that mean are they being counted properly okay um so Substack has numbers I mean listen IAB certification is not what it used to be it used to be sort of it's done by the interactive advertising bureau to make sure that yes. um to make sure that it's like a good standard number um they'll probably tell you that it is um but it is not IAB certified so your numbers are probably close to what they are okay um, are they being filtered properly and what are those numbers but don't compare like your your RSS numbers to your YouTube because like your numbers off podcast it does take a minute to get a down what is considered a download yes and it takes 1 second on YouTube so right. if you're saying well I got this many YouTube uh, listens and I got this many podcast ones clearly YouTube is better I'm just going to become a YouTuber I'd be like, eh, that's a bad idea. That's like saying you're a millionaire, but you got up a million rubles right, instead of a million dollars. Right, 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 right. right. So I, I would look at that that carefully. I think showing up and doing this live every day is a great thing. Um, it's probably one of the best things. You've had your favorite radio performers and TV yeah. shows in the past, all of which you've connected to people by being there at a certain time every day and you know and being there. So you do get marks for for showing up and releasing consistently as well. 
Uh, one of the things I've struggled with is releasing podcast episodes on a consistent basis. Sometimes it's Monday, sometimes it's Wednesday. Yes. Sometimes it's Tuesday. It should be a little bit more consistent. I would like to keep a nice consistent run of these things because that way people know to have it. Then, then you buy part of their, um, of their media time. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then after that, the last advice is just be prepared to change. Yes. And when you get bored of what you're doing, uh, or you're worried that it's not connecting, Yes. Um, I would look for ways to do it differently and just be open to that change. Yes. Well, so that that's the phase I'm going through right now. And I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up because I am open to changing. I want to succeed see the I want to succeed at this. I will succeed at this. So right now it's about tweaking formats, trying different things out to continue to build audience. Yeah. If you're just growing incrementally every day, I think that's perfect. There's no such thing as hockey stick growth in this thing. Overnight, you're not going to see this thing skyrocket. It's not right. going to happen. Right. It doesn't matter if you get, uh, the, you know, anybody famous on your show. I think a lot of people really make a mistake. Well, yeah. you know, if I get this guest, people aren't showing up for the guest. They're showing up for you. And so you have to be good every day. You've got to be the star of the show. Right. And you, you know, sometimes I'll tell you a big secret. And I got all this credit being on a radio station. Yeah. Very simply by interviewing artists. And I, my questions are short. They're to the point. Yeah. I had hardly any airtime. I might have said five or six things. Yeah. But the artist did all the talking. But because I was asking the questions, I was getting all the credit for it. And people can't start coming up to me going, man, you're a musical genius. You're so smart. You're in, your knowledge is encyclopedic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually just going to Rolling Stone magazine and finding out what the fans wanted and just asking the questions. I was just the conduit yes. uh, for that stuff. Now I am very smart at music and I have interviewed everybody and I do have encyclopedic knowledge, but I certainly wasn't showing it in those interviews. I was just getting credit for it. And so that point again about getting credit for showing up, it's huge. So get in front of people, make, you know, radio stations used to send people out to make appearances. That, that counts, that matters, that's something, that's connection. Interesting. Anything you can do to, to be in front of people and connect. And, you know, to, to that end, doing this interview with you. For me, I'm showing up. It's like yes. and participate. Um, there was somebody who once suggested, well, what is marketing? Marketing is yeah. just being really involved. That's all it is. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Today, today's music is just marketing jingles, right? That's all they are. They're just two and a half minute marketing jingles to go buy the ticket to go see the artist live, right? And, cool. and with the hook in the first minute. Yes. Thanks, Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I like to call it as uh, thanks uh, Post Malone. He was the guy, in my yeah. opinion, that uh, within first 20, 13 seconds, you knew what the chorus was, right? So, mm -hmm. And that was gamesmanship on yes. behalf of, of, you know, for Spotify. Streaming, exactly. Right, because if, if you got past the first minute, yes, when the hook hit, then you got paid. Yes, yes, yes. Well, so I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought that up too, Matt. Uh, I just recently learned that, so we're, we're, we're tagged to 235 in the entrepreneur category here in Canada. So whatever that 235 out of 236 or 235 out of 235, I don't really care, but it gives me a number to go upwards on, right? So I know that if I show up every single day, there's a lot of people that aren't showing up every single day. And by that reason alone, I'm going to go up. Yes. And I also want to just throw out a word of warning about comparison. Yes. Um, killer, so, right? Well, you're live, so you do have to go up against people because every day at 12 noon, you are yes. going up against some things in Life. media. Some people might want to watch the lunchtime yes. news while it still yes. exists on Bell Media. <laughs> some some people might want might want to have lunch. You might be going up against lunch. Right. But w when it comes to other podcasts, you're not in competition with any other podcasts. So my favorite question to get people is mm. like how you're mm. thinking about this stuff. I'm going to ask you what is Netflix's number one competition. Netflix. What's their number one competition? My, my, my free time, frankly. Yeah. Or sleep. Yeah. That's what I'm, exactly. Yes. That's right. Yes. So, so when you look at, um, you know, aside from doing the show live, which you're going to do every day anyway, mm -hmm. you know, the rest of it is, is in the on-demand world. You're up against all the shit people have to do in a day. Yes. That's your competition. So, yes. you know, if you're number 234 in the entrepreneur category, maybe you can game that a little bit by releasing an episode on a Sunday when nobody right. else does, you'll move up right. a little bit. Yeah. Um, those, those stats don't impress anyone that no, much. I do, it, I do it accumulatively, Matt, anyways, right? I'll take all my, I take yeah. all my, all my views, all my interaction across everywhere, right? So I got a lot of interaction on LinkedIn, all these different platforms and there, and there's my offering to you as my partners, how I look at it. Yeah, totally. And, and, you know, you're right to be, you know, to, to be doing this live. There are people who like, especially influencers on Instagram, Hey, tons of 
likes and shares, and then you put them into a long form piece like this and they can't do it because yes. it's long form and it's, it's hard to do. So, you know, just comparison can be, can be rather evil. You should only be comparing against yourself. Yes. Well, and that, that is, that is really all I compare to, uh, again, as I said to you at the beginning here, the reason I showed up alive was to keep myself accountable and I was going to record it anyways. I'm like, well, hell, why don't I just fucking do it live? I just, I'm going to do it anyways. Yeah. And that's, I mean, and that's uh, our friends over at, uh, at Winnipeg sports talk thought that, Hey, we're live. 100%. We're just, yeah. Right. So now I'm wrestling as we wrap up here and I'm, I'm very grateful for your time. Now I'm wrestling with whether I just start doing this in the morning and doing some local news as well. And I'm being serious. Like why, why would I not just start a local news channel on YouTube? Uh, you definitely could. I would say that news is very difficult to monetize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also people where they get their news is from who knows where they get their news. I think they just wake up in the morning, roll over and check their phone. I, I think so too. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm also I, I, another little thing is I start to use a smart speaker. So I'll say, I'll say, oh, um, yeah. A L E X A, start my day. I might have a news package in there. Yes. So you, you may, if you were to do it on YouTube, I don't know that YouTube would be the first destination to go for that. So, but if you were to do an all encompassing news thing, I would say find a way to get three minutes into the smart speaker. Yeah. When I've been asking questions of our demographic and even the younger demographic, Matt, like what, what their consumption is like, right? Or do you drop a news package at 10 o'clock at night when people are like, like, again, back in the old school days, right? Where it's like, okay, well, I'm unwinding. I want to hear what Cundell and, and Billis had to say, and I'm going to go listen to them for half an hour. I don't know. Yeah, news at night is um, just riles people up. Mm. So people want to go to bed. That's why people like sleepy time podcasts. Yes. They yes. Do so well, like, I think who doesn't love a boring podcast to fall asleep to? <laughs> And from that, I've got, I offer my podcast, a sound off podcast. It's great to go to sleep by. Good segue. Yeah. Great segue. Matt Kendall, thanks for joining me here today. I really enjoyed the chat, enjoyed the banter, enjoyed the back and forth. I hope you'll come back again and have a conversation about this industry. I could have went on all day, but I want to be respectful of your time and I got some shit to do too. So. All right, cool. So uh, uh, you'll come back again? I will. Of course. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to uh, walk you back to the green room, say goodbye to the audience and come back and walk you out. All right. Bye, everyone. I'm being walked out again. It's just like radio. <laughs> Hang tight. <laughs> All right. There you go, team. We got Matt Kendall joining us here live in the lab. Going to turn some music back on here. Yep, there it is. Oh, we got, hey, you heard what he said. You all don't come here for the guest. Of course not. You come here for me. Keith Billis to show up live in the lab, noon central, Monday to Monday. Maybe we're going to do some more. I just don't know how we can't. We're going to figure it out live with you guys just maybe you're going to pop up and have some more youtube channels to come tune in and listen to what's going on in my life we'll see you guys tomorrow with die manual two dads in a lab trying to be two percent better the brand new show that die and i launched last week again noon central myself and die 10 pacific time i know dies over there in vancouver so two lot two <laughs> there we go two dads in a lab trying to be two percent better tomorrow live in the lab at noon central we'll see you guys tomorrow